Unitarianism grows out of the Congregationalist philosophy, and out of Unitarianism we see another different philosophical trend emerging. William Ellery Channing was one of the great Unitarian ministers, and one of his disciples was a woman, woman named Elizabeth Palmer Peabody, who becomes one of the great reform minds of 19th century America. Another leading minister of the time could have been Ralph Waldo Emerson. He was born in 1803. His father was a minister. Reverend Emerson's rectory was at the Old North Bridge in Concord, so he was there at the beginning of the American Revolution. Ralph Waldo Emerson, his son, does become a minister and also a school teacher in the first decades of the 19th century. Then after his first wife died, he began to doubt and he began to pursue life as a philosopher, founding a movement that we call transcendentalism. Now, Emerson was a great essayist and also a great orator. He would give lectures throughout the country addressing different issues but also addressing a change in definition of the American character. Self-reliance, for example, is one of his great lectures in which he says that whosoever would be a man would be a nonconformist, calling upon individuals to break free of social, political, religious conventions. He was invited to give the address at the Harvard Divinity School in the 1830s, and in the course of this address, he expressed his skepticism about the existence of God. Now, if you're a minister and you don't believe in God, that's a great occupational hazard. So Emerson was pursuing life as a philosopher as opposed to a minister. He also was a friend and mentor to Henry David Thoreau, also from Concord. And Thoreau spent two years living on Walden Pond, actually on land Emerson owned on Walden Pond. Walden Pond is about a mile or two outside of downtown Concord or the town of Concord, and this was Emerson's woodlot. If you owned a place in town, typically you might own a wooded area to gather firewood. So Thoreau set up shop on Walden Pond for a couple of years in an experiment in self-reliance, as Thoreau called it, living simply in this cabin. Thoreau had already written a couple of books, one on a week he had spent canoeing on the Concord and Merrimack River with his brother, another about his trek through the Maine woods while he was at Walt, and in fact the publisher sent back the 900 unsold copies of the first printing of, I think, 920 of the Maine woods, and there Thoreau was in this little cabin with over 900 books, and he said, Few men can boast of having a library of more than 900 volumes, and fewer still can say that they wrote every one. The ideas that Emerson and Thoreau and Elizabeth Palmer Peabody and William Ellery Channing are espousing on self-reliance and on transcending the narrow constraints of society are part of a general reform trajectory in American life, and they tap into something very important in the American identity the idea of self-reliance, the idea of individualism, the idea of being skeptical of social, cultural, religious conventions, and the idea of relentless questioning. And we perhaps can see the roots of all of these things in the Puritan lives of the 17th century, and certainly in the ideas of the American Revolution in the 18th century. And we see these individuals in the 19th century transforming these ideas and making them over anew.